Yeah, one of the challenges uh, while designing curriculum for the course is uh, how to keep uh, the students abreast of the developments in the field. So keeping that in mind, while uh, we are designing the curriculum last time, we have kept a lot of uh, the advanced uh, technologies. In a way, I can uh, boast myself uh, that uh, I think even compared to some of the universities of West, we have a lot of technology component. But again, to make it uh, very clear, we start with the traditional subject and uh, take it to the technology applications. For example, typically if you take uh, library catalogs we have, afterwards uh, the machine readable catalogs were developed. Now we are talking about metadata. So is the case with the traditional classification and the thesaurus constructions now went into ontology where in a thesaurus we simply mention about uh, related terms but in ontologies we make it explicit what kind of relation that is so that we can bring in a kind of description logics and uh, open up a plethora of opportunities. But again the, for the question you said about the software Yes, software are very, very short-lived, okay. Uh, I mean, as such, I, I believe in uh, one of the philosophies, nothing is permanent in this world, and uh, except the change, okay. So we have to keep in mind, a uh, lot of changes keep occurring, and uh, even the teachers have a challenge how to keep themselves abreast of the developments, uh, so that uh, when the students go out of uh, the school, they should not uh, feel they are outdated or uh, they belong to ancient times, okay? That is the main challenge. And also we have to keep in mind the market demands. So if I, my student goes uh, into the market with our degree, naturally the industry or the business or the outside world have certain key expectations. They have done this course, that means they are knowledgeable, of, uh, knowledgeable in this area. So that also we have to keep in mind, otherwise they may not get the right jobs and as such there should not be too much of a gap between what they are taught and what is being practiced. So that's why, I mean, always we keep on changing the syllabus and we don't depend too much on software. In fact, in the syllabus also, even programming language we don't mention, concepts we, we teach more or less all procedural programming languages, more or less they are the same, except uh, uh, there are other performance and other uh, differences. So we tell the key concepts of uh, library science and uh, the relevant software we may mention, but I think nowadays much of the software is, uh, uh, if I am allowed to use the word, though I don't like the word user-friendly, so they should be able to learn by themselves, okay? As long as the concepts, they are clear. Yeah, but again, as I again keep on sending, actually, I keep on telling my students, uh, I believe in the three principles in my teaching and in the real world. Uh, nothing is permanent and nothing is absolute. Nothing is perfect, okay? So that uh, we know that uh, it's an ever-changing world. And we always talk anything in its context, relative to its context, because there is nothing called absolute truth kind, okay? So that is also valid, okay? There is, again, nothing is perfect, I tell. Okay? No system is perfect, no theory is perfect. Okay, everything requires to be improvised upon. I mean, after all, the entire development is a spiral development. Okay, it's not uh, either cyclic or a linear development kind. So I always feel one of the oft-repeated questions uh, in many conferences is, uh, what happens to the future of libraries? Okay, see in philosophy there is a debate like form and uh, content. Okay, the form may change, content changes less. Okay, the essence of uh, uh, people, for example, the essence of mankind may change. I mean, it, it won't change. Whereas I think the format of the way they dress or the way they have the knowledge or the system, these, these uh, they take, I mean, they absorb changes. I mean, they accept changes. So what I say is, if the librarian's job is to give information, okay, after all, 
as long as mankind uh, exists, there is information need. Even if I want to have something, I should know where do I get, uh, for example, today's lunch or any, any nearby restaurant is there. If libraries fail to satisfy the information needs, somebody would do that. As such, you know, there is a lot of debate that uh, when Google is giving a lot of information, what is the need of a library? Uh, which is a naive question, I, I do believe. That's not what Google does, okay? But again, we have a feeling that uh, uh, libraries uh, uh, have become obsolete or uh, they become irrelevant. But libraries, library is only a form. The essence is the information supply, giving information to the needy, okay? So if librarians fail to do that, somebody will do that. He may not be called a librarian, okay? So information need, I always say, as long as mankind exists, the information need exists. So we have to change ourselves to tune, and especially more so, when plethora of deluge of information is there, there should be people to handle information. It's not that uh, everybody wants the entire information in the world. He wa everybody wants specific information. Nobody wants to spend a lot of time in uh, discovery of the information. So these discovery tools, much of the technology nowadays uh, definitely plays a key role or uh, assistive role, I mean supporting role in uh, discovering information, probably if, if uh, librarians or information people can package that information in a nutshell, I think they would be most welcome forever. Google only just, I mean, um, it, it's only a, a, a search engine, only a discovery, this one. It doesn't do many things which normal uh, li library people do. For example, packaging, packaging the information and another thing one of the weaknesses of uh, or we don't say weakness that i think it is a built-in problem is uh, see uh, in library science we talk about uh, precision and recall that means how precise the information is or uh, how much information we retrieved unfortunately many of these search engines they emphasize i suspect more on the recall so on an average, when you search Google, you get uh, 1,000 uh, sets retrieved or 2,000 sets retrieved. But if you find somebody relevant uh, in first two, three pages, jocularly I say he should take the family for a moonly dinner, okay? Because much of the relevant information is irrelevant. The reason is probably it is emphasis on uh, recall. Besides, traditionally librarians uh, have been doing indexing, okay, controlled vocabulary mechanisms. There are so many, uh, I mean, uh, uh, developments in place. Okay, can't, actually, we have been doing context-sensitive retrieval systems, uh, though not we haven't developed the computational models of it. But again, if you look in uh, the, I mean, of course, they are, now they are a bit outdated, uh, we have PRESI subject indexing system, preserved context indexing system. That means uh, in the indexing, we are preserving the context, in what context this particular index term appeared. So that I, I know that uh, whether that is relevant document to me. So there will be least uh, unsought links like what uh, Google does. But again, do you think that uh, Google is inefficient or any search engine is inefficient in providing? But the problem is they index the static web pages, okay, which are mostly built in HTML or some other mechanism where there is no uh, structured data or controlled data. Naturally, it retrieves much more irrelevant information. So my feeling is, uh, if Google retrieves 100 pages, and if nobody goes more than three, four pages, that means rest of the 96 pages are as good as not retrieved. And there is no use of it. I mean, retrieving so much when people don't even look at it. That's, but again, it's not that Google doesn't have the, the expertise to do so. But much of the systems, because to build structured metadata is a costly affair as such now. And in future, probably, if we develop intelligent systems, 
which build automatic metadata for a particular uh, thing. But again, uh, one contribution of uh, the impact of computer technology on the library sciences, we may need metadata in many contexts, not only for books, okay, for events we require metadata, for products we, we require metadata, about people, about institutions, everything. But building metadata for everything is a, right now is a costly affair. I think uh, for some time, probably at the time of generating the product or, or event and other things, uh, if people generate, because always uh, distributed systems, so you have the advantage of everybody working rather than a, a particular library developing metadata for all the books or whatever objects, not only books, but any kind of object or event or process or anything. That is exactly what we dream uh, when we talk about semantic web technology.